Now, good morning, Britain has learnt that hundreds of lives, including those of many children, are at risk because of a shortage of bone marrow and organ donors, especially amongst ethnic minorities. We're asking whether you can sign up to help save a life this morning. Yeah, three people die every day in the UK who are in need of a transplant. Nearly 7,000 people are waiting for a donor, which includes almost 200 children. And children needing a kidney transplant are having to wait almost a year. Well, Dr. Hillary has gone to Harefield Hospital this morning, where many of these life-changing transplants take place. Morning, Hillary. Good morning. Yes, I'm at the world-famous Harefield Hospital where people come here to the outpatient department to be assessed, first of all, for their transplantation and then, of course, have that agonizing wait of weeks, months or even years to have the operation. But it does completely transform lives. I'm with this intrepid group here, all of whom have either had heart or lung transplants. And they set off uh, just uh, recently to go to Ecuador to climb Cotopaxi. It was an amazing feat. I'm so proud of them. What they've achieved is fantastic, really mind-blowing. And, and what's really good is that they wanted to say thank you to their donors, uh, but also to raise awareness of what life can be like after transplantation. But it's not like that before. Take a look at these stories. I needed the double lung transplant because I have cystic fibrosis and I got so bad that I needed oxygen 24-7. Before transplant, I was pretty much existing rather than living. My life uh, was really awful. I was in a wheelchair. I was on oxygen 24 hours a day. Without the generosity of my donor and my donor's family giving the ultimate gift and giving me a heart, I wouldn't be able to enjoy my children, my wife, my sister, my parents, my friends. You can't thank the person that saved your life because, of course, they've died. So what I'm trying to do is, is pay it forward and then show my gratitude by trying to help others and save other lives. Without their very generous gift of life, I simply wouldn't be here. And I've had 28 brilliant years since my transplant. Well, I'm with Emily Hoyle, who had a lung transplant uh, because of cystic fibrosis. You guys only got back on Sunday from Ecuador. You, achieved, you got to 5,790 metres. That's actually a stunning achievement. How did it feel? Um, well, I think everyone surpassed their expectations, and it was an amazing experience. I think every one of us loved it. It was, we weren't sure how we were going to all react, so it was quite an experiment as well as an experience. Well, you've certainly raised awareness that life like that wasn't always like that for you, was it with cystic fibrosis? How bad did it get before uh, the transplant? So I was in hospital for over a year, and I had nights where I was told I wouldn't make it through the night, and my family had to come and say goodbye to me, which was quite traumatic when they're gripping your hands and begging you not to leave them. It, um, it was very difficult. I was on a ventilator for the last three months before my transplant, and I was, yeah, I was very lucky to still be alive. Fantastic. So what would your message be to our viewers today? Uh, we want people to join the register. Just how important is it? Well, at the moment, organs are being wasted. People who would donate aren't giving their lungs. So I think lives can be saved, and what greater legacy can you leave after death than to save someone else's life? I absolutely agree with you, and of course we need families to consent as well, so people who would be willing to, to donate, we need to have that conversation with their families so that there's a, a higher percentage of families willing to say yes when the time comes. But you guys have achieved uh, fantastic uh, things, well done, uh, you've certainly raised awareness and uh, opened my eyes to what is possible thanks to surgeons like Andre Stein.